Hey, good meeting you, Thank you for taking the time to sit with us. Uh, we are here today at Collision, which is a technology conference summit, and uh, we're pleased to have you with us today. And uh, let me say that Federica Bieta is the managing director for the Coalition for Rainforest uh, Nations. And uh, we'd like to learn more. Where do you see technology taking us as individuals and also as organizations? Uh, it's taken a far. Um, uh, in our coalition has been very important technology. When we started 12 years ago, I would say we were using really basic technologies, like you would say emails. Um, but it was something that was really make us reach uh, um, all rainforest countries and then uh, uh, being in contact every time, you know, rainforests are in three different regions of the world, from Asia to Africa uh, to Latin America. And so you need to have an instrument uh, that, uh, um, you know, puts everyone together when you cannot be physically together. Uh, then, uh, I mean, basic technology actually would say now about WhatsApp, but that we didn't have uh, until three, four years ago. Uh, but now it's really an instrument that, that uh, allows you to be close, uh, exchange views uh, uh, every minute instantaneously. And there's been very important because what we did was really trying to give a uh, an economic value to the last rainforest, so they're more valuable standing when they weren't chopped down. Um, and to do that, you have a lot of different point of views uh, coming from the different region of the world. And to find an instrument that actually will work for everyone, there is a lot of uh, discussion, exchanging of views, and uh, groundbreaking that you need to do. And so you need to have this communication ongoing that cannot just be once or twi twice a year when you meet during UN conference that are there. So these kind of basic technologies have been really, really useful. Where we are now, uh, that we have a full mechanism that uh, the CFRN, the coalition, uh, created um, through the Paris Agreement and is captured with the Article 5. Um, we have to fill a new gap. And that where we see space for new technologies coming in. The new gap is really now implementing and making sure that uh, finance, private sector finance can actually uh, reach out developing countries and pay for the effort of reduction of their emissions or increasing their carbon stocks. Uh, and, and to do that, uh, we need to create tools like uh, trading exchange, uh, like, uh, um, you know, registries uh, that will allow to recognize real ownership to the community that actually they're doing the efforts uh, and for a private sector to be able to support uh, uh, those efforts. So that we see where the next, uh, you know, disruptions is going to be. Quite interesting. I hear you say uh, we have to fill a gap. And the bright line is more about filling the gap between the strategy that the organization designed and the delivery, the implementation of the, uh, the strategy. Now, for your case here, of course, because it's the idea, right? Many organizations have the idea. But making the idea into reality sometimes is quite challenging. How do you make it happen? It's quite challenging, especially in very small teams. And when you are a you know, this structural organization and trying to change the world, try to change our natural capital has been value. You always also need to be actually a small team of dedicated person because if you just build a big infrastructure and you don't know actually what is the phase you're gonna change next, uh, we are, you know, really a new frontier, you cannot have that. So you have to have a small team that is flexible and ready to move and ready to adapt, but at the same time that takes a lot of challenges because when you have a small team you don't you forget a little bit your private life you dedicate it to the cause because it takes so much of your time and your energy um, so you know th there are challenges uh, but uh, I would say really small dedicated team uh, is very important but use also of you know technology that are, allow you to do uh, more than you could do you know maybe 20 years ago and, um, and just be always innovative uh, and uh, look at uh, what there are the new options uh, out there. 
uh, and never you know sleep uh, on uh, things that you have arrived but actually there's always something new to look uh, to look after it's not it's not easy it's challenging but that's how we have been you know operating in the past uh, I would say 14 50 years and one final question I mean, people tend to say people are the most important assets in the organizations. People are key to help them moving. What role and what, what, what do you think about that message? The role of people within an organization to make things happen. It's true, it's true. Uh, as I was saying, a small group of people, but dedicated, they can really uh, think, make things changing. You have to have passion, you have to have uh, you know, need to get the value to the people in your organization and you need to see that they, they believe uh, on the cause as well. Many of uh, uh, our small staff as well comes from developing countries, right, where they have rainforest. Uh, so they really feel that they have to say they're working for their country, they're working for something that they believe. Um, and then, uh, you know, and that's how you create a team, basically, um, you know, that you can make cheat change things in the world uh, just with a lot of passion and dedication. Excellent. Rodrika, thank you so much. For thank you so much yeah, for much having fun. me. Thank you so much.